All right. Uh, there seems to be some confusion about um, some uh, sweeps on a VNA, and that kind of comes to people who grew up in ham radio land and people who grew up in RF design land. Um, so people who grew up in radio land uh, generally want to measure antennas in VSWR measurement uh, units. So they're taught, you know, if your SWR is less than 2 to 1, you're okay. The closer you get to 1 to 1, the better. Um, a lot of people think that you really need to get really, really good. Uh, a lot of people think that if you have a VSWR of greater than 3, then you're going to blow up your radio. Um, so there's a lot of um, uh, learning that goes on in Radioland in uh, SWR units. Um, in RF design land, they never talk about SWR. They only talk about return loss. And so people who generally have um, grew up using VNAs um, are going to be really interested in return loss measurements. Um, and um, those are in dBs. Uh, SWR units are kind of a weird thing. Um, and return loss is just dBs. It's like how many dBs come back. So 10 dB, 20 dB, whatever like that. So um, when you turn on a VNA, you're going to get two traces. You're going to get the Smith chart trace, and you're going to get the return loss trace. So here's the return loss. And we can see it's about a 10 dB drop here from the top down to the bottom. So we would say this has a, a 10 dB return loss. In fact, we can measure it well, using this little thing right here. Uh, depending if I get my hand close to it or farther away. We're getting about 11 dB uh, of return loss, um, but you can read that directly off this little number here. It's probably hard to see in this video, but that's this little dip here. You put a cursor where you want it, and you can read out the actual value here. But some people say, oh, well, well then what's the, what's, the, what's the SWR? Well, you can do that. We can, we can go here, and we can set the display. Display uh, format to SWR. So now we have this trace, which is uh, return loss, and we have this trace, which is um, uh, SWR. Now uh, the uh, the oops. Oh man, it's really hard to hold this thing. I try to put this little clamp here to hold it. There we go. All right. So. The actual um, shape of these two waveforms is the same. There's a mathematical relationship between return loss and SWR, and I'll show that I'll show that a bit later. But I wanted to show you here that um, uh, we can measure uh, uh, SWR. Oh man, I need to. The camera is in the way for me to see one point. I think this is 1.64. So the SWR is 1.64, and our return loss is about 11. Okay, so remember those numbers, 164 and 11. All right, so if you want to see it, you can see it, um, but uh, you can also just do a mathematical um, um, transform between the two. So, so now let's take a look at that. Let's move this out of the way. Um, this is the uh, this is the equation. Um, let's see if the room lights help this or not. A little bit. Okay, so this is the um, uh, equations that go uh, transform return loss to uh, SWR to return loss and return loss to SWR. And you can see that these um, equations are based in logarithms and and uh, they're based in ratios and things. So. It's kind of an ugly, uh, ugly equation, but that's what it is. Um, and most people, <laughs> well, I should say me, <laughs> I don't like trying to calculate these things. So there's a lot of uh, uh, companies who will just give you uh, a cheat sheet. So this is from many circuits, but everybody's got one. Go online, download it. Uh, this is return loss versus uh, SWR. So. Remember, in our case here, we had about an 11, 11 dB return loss. So let's look up here at around 11. So here, here at around 11, I think it was 10 point, 10 point something. And our, um, uh, maybe it was 11 point something. Anyway, our SWR, I think, was 1.6 something. 
oh, maybe it was one point. I couldn't really read it. It was really hard to read. But um, let's say that you actually had an 11 dB return loss, and that would be right about here. And you could just read off that your, your SWR would be 1.78. All right? And so um, when I say that, like most people say that you need to have an SWR of 2 or better, um, that a lot of people would say, no, you need a return law, I mean, a SWR of 2 to 1 or better, and a uh, return loss of 10 dB. Let's see if those kind of correlate here. Here's your, here is your uh, SWR. So an SWR of 2 equates to a return loss of 9.5. All right, so that's kind of the rules of thumb. It's like, ah, if you have a 10 dB return loss, you're okay. Or if you have an SWR of two to one, you're okay. Um, and then if we would get up into the three to one area, here's the three to one area. Um, this is three to one SWR is a six, uh, six dB return loss. Um, I don't know if anybody who uses that number, but uh, anything, you know, around 10 dB of return loss is, uh, is reasonable. If you want to get uh, ret perfect return losses, uh, let's say you're you're up here at 40 dB return loss. That's a that's an SWR of 1.02. Um, a 20 dB return loss gives you an a SWR of uh, 1.2. I would think most people would say 1.2 is fine for for transmitting. So if you want to really mm, be kind of rules of thumb. Uh, uh, return loss of 10 to 1 is okay, and the return loss of 20 to 1 is is really good, okay? That kind of thing. Um, so anyway, uh, you certainly can you certainly can push the buttons and um, let the uh, machine do the calculation for you, um, or you can just get calibrated in whatever units you like. If you really like SWR, then put this thing in SWR mode. If you like return loss, put it in return loss mode, which it defaults to. And it defaults to that because all VNAs default to that. Um, and uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, remember, uh, big ugly equation, or just have the machine do it.